you are not going to believe these results. Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. Alright, so what results exactly am I talking about here? Well, recently I got into contact with Corsair to make a major upgrade to the cooling to my system through their Hydro X program, and so they did end up graciously sending me over a couple of radiators, as well as some pumps and different tubing, and all the various different things I'm going to need, which I'm going to go over in this video, and guys, you are not going to believe the results. They are absolutely incredible. In fact, I didn't actually even believe the results at first myself. I had to rerun multiple tests multiple times to reconfirm that yes, in fact, it was actually that big of an improvement. But in any case, let's go ahead and get into this. And I want to go over this video today because, you know, video cards are starting to become a little bit less difficult to get your hands on. They're starting to make their way towards their MSRPs. And at this point, there may actually be a decent chunk of you out there who have actually been lucky enough to get your hands on a new RTX 30 series GPU. And if that's the case, you probably already know that those GPUs get very, very hot. And it's definitely not going to be a bad idea to go towards a water cooling solution. And I think that going for a full water Water loop is probably going to be your best bet for getting the uh, best temperatures out of your hardware. So whether or not you're looking to actually do a water cooling loop yourself, or maybe you're just interested to see what the results are uh, coming from someone who's actually never done a full water loop before, well, here's a video that I think is definitely going to be very interesting, and you're definitely going to want to stick to the end of the video to see those ridiculous results. So the first thing I want to go over is why did I choose Corsair? And yes, I did choose Corsair for a reason more than just because they're going to send me free product, and the reason why I decided to go with Corsair is because I think from at least the perspective of someone who's never done water cooling before, it's going to be your best option because they just make it super easy so that you can't really screw anything up. But now let's go ahead and talk about the parts that I'm going to go ahead and use in this loop. And I decided to go with the most power hungry parts available right now, or at least the most uh, high performance power hungry parts. So I decided to go with the RTX 3090 Strix, which draws a ridiculous 480 watts when you decide to overclock it. I decided to go with a Ryzen 9 5950X for the CPU, also I'm going to be overclocking that. And then also for the case, I decide to go uh, with the, I believe it's the Fractal Design S2 Meshify XL. So the reason why I decided to go with this case and why I'm mentioning it here, and I'm not mentioning my motherboard or anything else, is because, well, it's important to know what case you're going to be choosing so that you can fit all your parts in it. And this was the only case I could find under like 300 bucks uh, that could actually fit a thick 480 millimeter radiator as well as a 420 millimeter radiator in it at the exact same time. So that's why I decided to go with those parts. But in any case, now let's go ahead and get into the actual loop itself. So first of all, let's talk about fittings. So I decided to go with 16 regular fittings for the soft tubing. Uh, and the reason why I decided to do that is because for my loop, I'm going to actually be using two separate loops, one loop for the CPU and one loop for the GPU. And what you're going to need is you're going to need two fittings for the radiator, two fittings for the uh, pump itself, as well as two fittings for the block. So that actually adds up to six fittings and they come in packs of four. And so of course, if you're just doing one loop and you're only using one radiator and you're only doing say a GPU or CPU, well, that means that you're gonna need to buy uh, two of those four packs. But again, I'm doing two separate loops. So I'm gonna be needing to buy four of those packs, meaning I'm gonna need 16 fittings. Now I also decide to buy one pack of 90 degree fittings as well as one pack of 45 degree fittings as I decide, you know, I might want to try and sneak them around some corners or something, and I think it'll look really nice if I do that. Now, next, I decided to buy two packs of clear soft tubing, and the reason why I chose soft tubing is because with hard tubing, especially if you're a newbie uh, to doing these water loops, that's going to be very difficult, and soft tubing is going to make it so it's much easier to upgrade. And then I also decided to get two liters of the XL5 clear coolant, as the clear coolant, in theory, should be uh, the least corrosive to any components inside there, as well as it just basically is going to work with any build. Now, next, I also decided to buy one one XG7 RGB Strix GPU block for the Strix 3090. I decided to buy one XC7 RGB AIM4 compatible CPU block, uh, two of the XD5 pumps for the loop, one of the thickest XR7 480 millimeter radiators uh, to do intake for the GPU as it's definitely going to be uh, needing to get rid of a lot of heat there. I decided to do one XR5 420 millimeter radiator for the CPU, which is going to be exhausting. Uh, so that's not quite as thick as the intake one for the GPU, but again, the CPU is not going to be pumping out as much heat. And then also you're going to need a pipe cutter because I definitely recommend that you do not cut these tubings with just like a regular scissors. You're not going to get a very clean cut that way. You're also going to need some sort of rad cleaner because you're going to want to uh, clean out your radiators before you use them. And you're also going to need distilled water to flush out all of that rad cleaning solution. So now that we've gone over the different parts I've decided to use, now let's go into actually assembling the loop. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you assemble the loop is you're going to want to clean out your radiator like I just mentioned. So first of all, you're going to want 
want to go ahead and grab your radiator like so, like this. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to find the actual ports here and you're going to want to uh, actually get some distilled water mixed with that radiator cleaner that you decide to use. Uh, dump a little bit in there uh, as instructed. It'll tell you how much to mix and how much to dump in there. Uh, and then uh, after you've done that, you're going to go ahead and just, you know, tighten the actual fittings back on here that close it up. You're going to shake it up like this for a little bit. Uh, just shake it in every way that make sure you hear the water sloshing around. Once you're done with that, you're going to go ahead and just set it down and wait at least a couple hours to let it kind of just sit in there. Uh, once you're done, I actually do recommend you pick it up, shake it again for a little bit. Then you're going to go ahead and unscrew these uh, two things here uh, so that you can go ahead and just like drain all of that solution out of there. And then you're going to pour a whole gallon of distilled water through it to make sure that you get everything out. Maybe shake it every now and then to make sure you're getting that solution out. And now you're ready to actually start assembling your loop. It's very important that you do this. I know that you might want to shortcut and not do it, but seriously, guys, you got to clean out your radiator because it's very rare that you get like a really clean radiator. So again, I really recommend that you do that. But now going into the assembling. So all you really need to know is that what you want to do is you want to take basically uh, start with your uh, maybe pump slash reservoir combo. Start start thinking about that first, because what you're going to do is you're going to take uh, all that, you know, very cool water that's sitting inside your reservoir. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take that tubing and you're going to go right to the block. Now, I decided to go uh, with my GPU just left to right. I don't believe it really matters on the GPU where you actually put the intake of the water. I don't think it really matters. It does matter with the CPU block and it will tell you, but for the GPU, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so that I decided to go first to the GPU. Then what you're going to do is the GPU is going to heat up. So now you're going to have to take all that hot water and put it right into the radiator. So you go from the reservoir to the GPU, from the GPU to the radiator, then the radiator, it cools all that water off and you put it back in the reservoir. And it's just like a very simple way of thinking about it. That's how that works. That's why that makes sense. So now that you've got the idea of how you're going to actually put it together, uh, now let's actually talk about, you know, putting the actual tubing together because some of you might actually be a little bit nervous about this. I know that I definitely was the first time that I put my system together as I was, you know, since I've never done it before, I was worried about stuff leaking all over. But I got to tell you guys, I definitely would not be worrying about that whatsoever as long as you do it correctly and it's pretty you know it's pretty easy to do correctly it's hard to screw up uh, all you have to do is you know make sure that you get that tubing on there uh, nice and tight uh, you don't have to be using any tools just do it by your hand but make sure it's very tight uh, you don't want it to be so loose that stuff's coming out um, but if you do that correctly it's going to work there's not going to be any sort of leaking. I do recommend you do it inside of the computer and then you fill it inside of the computer uh, with one of those. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, you should probably pick up. Um, you should definitely fill it with um, one of those uh, little things that you squeeze. You can find them on Amazon. They're kind of like uh, a radiator filler. You can look that up and you'll probably find them. It's just like a little plastic thing with a, a tube at the end where you just kind of put it in there and you squeeze it in. And so then that way you can fill it while you're building it inside of your computer. I made the mistake of building part of it outside the computer and it made it a lot more difficult. So I definitely recommend you build it inside of the computer. But again, if you get the fittings put on correctly and you tighten them, I mean, you can pull as hard as you want. Those those fittings, those tubings are not going to come off and it's not going to leak. So definitely, I wouldn't be too worried about that as long as you do it correctly. And again, it's pretty easy to do it correctly. But now let's go ahead and talk about the results because you guys are not going to believe this. And again, I honestly personally didn't believe it myself and had to rerun it multiple times to reconfirm. But uh, taking a look first at the GPU, as I think this one was the most impressive, the RTX 3090 Strix on the regular core, which, uh, you know, some people are saying the regular cooler was really really good and all. I found it to not be that great. Actually, it was fine. But for the 3090 overclocked, it was definitely struggling, in my opinion. Uh, it saw actually a maximum temperature. And keep in mind, my room was about 72 degrees at all times. When I did this, the max temperature I saw with the regular AIB cooler on there was about 82 degrees Celsius. Now, when I went to the water cooling, wait for it, it dropped to a maximum temperature under full load of actually 46 degrees Celsius. So that's a massive drop of 36 degrees Celsius. In terms of performance, it did allow me to get nearly a 100 megahertz more out of the core while still remaining much, much cooler. On top of that, the GPU memory was also much cooler because the water helps extract the GPU heat so much quicker that it doesn't leak over into the memory chip. So that's definitely a huge deal, especially for the 3090 as well, where those uh, back memory chips can get very, very hot. And I know some people get nervous about it. So yeah, taking a look at that, seeing a 36 degrees uh, difference, you know, in terms of the actual performance in games, you're not going to see like a ton more performance. You might see like maybe 5% uh, more performance, maybe a little bit more if you're lucky. But again, it's going to allow uh, the longevity of your GPU. It's probably going to get much, much better. And then on top of that, yeah, that GPU memory is kind of a concern. So I'm, I'm really glad
glad that going to water cooling was able to help that a lot. And honestly, guys, if you're using like an RTX 3090 out there, I would almost say that water cooling is necessary to make sure uh, that your GPU is staying at a reasonable temperature level. If you don't have the Founders Edition, a lot of these other 3090 models are going to have a hard time keeping it cool. Now for the CPU, it wasn't quite as impressive. It only dropped a couple of degrees, but keep in mind the actual uh, radiator that I chose for the CPU was a little bit thinner than the one I chose for the GPU, and it also went from a super thick 420 millimeter all-in-one. I believe it was like the, that Arctic uh, 420 one that they're selling. I went from that to a actually thinner radiator on the loop, and it still dropped a few degrees in temperature, at least in the test that I decided to do. But overall, yeah, it was definitely really impressive to see how much of a drop in temperature I was able to get going to a full water loop, and I just think that the whole PC looks a lot better as well. And honestly, guys, if you are interested in doing any water cooling, I definitely would go ahead and click the link in my description below to go ahead and check out Corsair's HydraX water cooling, because again, I think if you're interested in doing water cooling, you've never done it before, this is definitely going to be your best option. And guys, it's a really awesome thing to do. I think it was probably the most fun thing I've done in PC gaming in a really long time. And if you've got a GPU on you right now and you want to water cool it, I highly recommend that you go for it. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that water cooling loops are worth it? Or do you think that they're just way too expensive? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you guys in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.